Hi, everybody. It's Tiffany with Crafting Change. I'd like to welcome everybody to our Thursday Fiber Arts Zoom Room. Uh, today, we are very honored to have Stacy Wiener from Soap Sack with us. Hi, Stacy. Hi. Hello. I'm so excited. <laughs> Super excited to see you here. And um, we have Melanie, our, our crochet um, uh, superwoman uh, here with us um, from our advisory board. So hi, Melanie, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. All right, so today we are going to be working with uh, Melanie and Stacy, and we're gonna learn how to make a soap sack. Um, we are working currently with one organization, Piper's Project in Kansas for Soap Sack, but we also encourage everyone to make soap sacks to donate in your local community. Um, Crafting Change is really big about always looking to our local community first to see how we can help them. And then if there's no one in your local community that needs the item, then we look to our national partners who may need the help. So um, look local first. And if you don't see anyone um, local that needs help, then we can go to our national partners that we're always working with. Um, and if you know someone in your local community that needs help um, and needs more help than you can give, let us know, craftingchange.org slash request and fill out a form and we'll get in touch with them and see how we can help them as a national organization. We're always willing to do that. So I'll I'll let you find people take it away and we'll learn how to make it. I know I've got my crochet hook and yarn ready to go, ready to learn. So if we're all ready, let's get going. So we will be using Stacy's wonderful crochet pattern she has on her Ravelry page. Also, it's available on linebrand.com and on pretty much all of our platforms and even our Facebook page in the file section. We're going to be using some 100% cotton yarn, uh, a darning needle, little pair of scissors, and, and we're using a size eight, five millimeter crochet hook. And uh, I don't know if Jessica or Kelly are in the room, but this is um, on Bonnie's one. So Bonnie's legacy, making some soap sacks. So this pattern is wonderful because it says exact gauge, not important. So. If you miss a stitch, it's not important. As long as you get the finished size around four by six inches, you are good to go. First step, slip knot, which I know all of you can do not by now. Okay, slip knot and chain five. So one, two, three, four, five. And then we are going to move back into our first chain right here. So we're gonna insert our hook, yarn over, pull through. You have three, uh, I'm sorry, two loops on your hook. And now we're not gonna yarn over. We're just gonna take this first one and pull it through that one. You end up with a little tiny ring. So let me do that again. Okay, you have your chain five. We're going back right here. Insert our hook, grab the yarn, pull through. Two loops on your hook, not yarn over, grab the first one and pull it through that second one. Okay. Don't tighten it yet, just leave yourself a little wiggle room and then you should have a little ring like this. So now we are going into our round one. Round one says, chain one, work 12 double crochets in ring, slip stitch in beginning chain to join. Personally, I chain two. It's just easier for me to see where the beginning chain is. That is a personal preference. So try it with both. Uh, I'm gonna chain two, just it's easier for me to see. So you have chain two, and now we're gonna go, let's see, right here in the middle of the ring. Okay, double crochet, yarn over, insert into the ring, yarn over, pull ups. You have three loops on your hook. Uh, if you remember, we did the half double crochet last class. We yarned over and pulled through all three loops. There's only one little modification for the double crochet. So we're going yarn over, pull through one, two loops, 
yarn over, pull through both. One double crochet. So yarn over, oops, insert in your circle, pull up a loop, grab that yarn, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook. There you go. Yarn over, pull through one, two loops. So we're going right in the middle of the circle. We're not looking for any stitches or anything or any chains. We're going right in the middle of this one. So chain two, and then double crochet, yarn over into the middle of the circle, grab this yarn and pull up. Three loops should be on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two loops. Leaves you with two, yarn over again, and pull through everything on your hook. That's one double crochet. Okay, and then that's where we were. So <laughs> that's where we were. Okay. This first one, our chain two does not count as a stitch. So ignore it. So we're counting with this one. So we have one, we're gonna add 11 more. So yarn over, insert into the circle, grab your yarn, pull up three loops, yarn over, pull through one, two, yarn over again and pull through the rest. One double crochet made. Yarn over, in the circle, wrap the yarn, pull up three loops, yarn over, pull through the first two, leaves you with two loops, yarn over, and through all of them. That's one, two, three. And you will do this until we have 12 double crochets in the circle. Okay, just do it slowly one more time. Yarn over in the circle, grab your yarn, pull up three loops, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through the leftover loops. And I forgot to count, so of course I have to go back. So let's see, two, four, six, eight, ten. Okay, eleven. Oops, eleven, twelve. Okay. So at, at the end of round one, you should have something that looks like this: A little happy wreath. So now we are going to slip stitch in our beginning chain. So you remember our chain two does not count. So we're going to count up one, two. Oh, focus in a way. So one, two was just our chain two that doesn't count. So we'll go into the third stitch. So one, two, three. Slip stitch in here. One, two, three. Insert your hook right here, yarn over, and go right through your, both of the loops on your hook. Of course, now I did a double crochet. Right. So one, two, three, insert hook, pull up the yarn, you have two loops, take the first one, and just pull it right through the second one. So this is your end of round one. Someone Anything wants to know right? if that hole oh. is gonna stay. Uh, yes, but, okay, so we have the uh, little uh, tail on the bottom. You can pull on it gently. It's gonna close it. And later also when we weave in this tail, you can almost completely close that little hole. But right now, yes, leave the little hole. That will work on all later. So round two is our increasing round. It says, 
chain two, work two double crochets in the next stitch, double crochet in the next stitch, repeat from asterisk, yada, 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 yada. I'll show it because I know reading patterns is always hard for people. So if I'm, I'm visual, I can remember it better when I see it. So we'll do chain two, one, two. And remember that does not count as a stitch. Now we're gonna start work. So we're gonna go right in here, the stitch right here. We're gonna work two double crochets. So we're gonna one double crochet, two double crochets into one stitch. The next one is just, oops, one double crochet. So we're going to alternate between one, two, one, two. So we did two, one, two. One. Two. So always increase on two. Don't worry, I'm gonna show this round again. One, increase on two. One, increase on two. One, increase on two. And your very last stitch will actually go right in here. Right there. So might not look like a stitch, but that is still a stitch. So this is where your very last stitch would be located. Now, if you have a problem starting off with the two, one, two, one, two, you can also do your, uh, your the double crochet and then increase on your second stitch. It turns out the same. So if you want to just do one, two, one, two, one, two, if, if, if that's easier counting for you, but you're just going to alternate between one double crochet and the next stitch, two double crochets. So don't forget this stitch back. That's the last one right here. This is what it looks like, like a little snail before <laughs> you join it. Let me rip it up. Let me frog it. Rip it, rip it, rip it. Frog, frog. Okay. Okay, so this was the end of our round one. Chain two. Okay, and then we're gonna go right here. We're gonna do our increase. So we're putting in two double crochets right here. One double crochet in the next stitch. Increase on two. Two double crochets in this one. One double crochet in, oops, come on again. One double crochet. Increase on two, so just gonna alternate. One double crochet, two double crochets. One, two. One, two, whoop, two. One, two. Then we're back at the end. And then again, your last stitch should be put right here. This is where your last stitch should go in. Okay. 
one more double crochet. And then we're gonna do the same thing we did the round before. We're gonna look for our chain two, one, two, ignore it. Third one, slip stitch. So one, two, three, insert our hook, pull up the yarn, two loops and take the loop and go right through the other loop. So it might already start curling up a little bit. So you're gonna start getting like a little teeny tiny basket. But this is end of round two. Cool. Fun, another increase round, but it's the same one. So you don't have to count differently. It's gonna be the same one. It's gonna be a, a one, two, one, two increase. So chain two does not count as a stitch. And we're doing the same one, same exact thing we did in round two. Okay, we're gonna start right here. Two double crochet. One, two. And now you're gonna just alternate. One, two, one, two. One double crochet, increase on two double crochets. One, two. One, two. One, two. One, increase on two. We're almost to the end, end of this round. One, two, one, two, one, two, And then again at the end, don't forget about our little buddy right here. So right there is where the last stitch should go in. Okay, one double crochet. And then again, you have your chain that doesn't count as a stitch. So one, two, three, which will be this little friend right here right here and slip stitch insert hook eventually pull up your yarn two loops on the hook and just take the loop and whoop, slip it through the other one and now you can already see how it's starting to curl up a little bit it's so cute already so super cute. So how many, someone asked, like, how many stitches do you have? Uh, you should have at this point, 27. If you are off by one or two, it's really not going to matter. So don't, okay. don't frog it <laughs> just because you are off by one stitch or by two. So don't worry about it. Keep going. It'll be okay. This is the end of round three. And guess what? We are done increasing. This is, this is it, three rounds are the hardest part because now all we're gonna do is we're gonna go up. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna do the rounds four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 is gonna be all the same. So chain two and guess what? You're just gonna double crochet in each stitch around. No other instructions, just rounds of double crochet, just one double crochet in each stitch now. Oh, 
which I love about this pattern has only two increase rows and the hard work is done. The only thing you have to pay attention to, well, you might not be like me, but I tend to crochet with the TV on or book on, you know, like a audio book or listen to music or something. I forget where to stop and I have like a giant bag instead of just 10 rows, so. Just one double crochet in each stitch around until you reach our chain two. And you know, always remember, don't forget this little stitch right here. If you forget it, then you're gonna get smaller and smaller. So remember, always rem remember that last little stitch right there. Okay. And we're repeating the same thing we did all the other rounds. Look for your chain two, one, two, three, and slip stitch into that third chain right there. Pull up and slip through. So you can see it's starting to look like this. So we're gonna do this now through rounds five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so chain two. Oh uh, yes, please always chain two at the beginning of your round. And that's what the pattern says. Rounds five through ten, repeat round four. So just go around with your one double crochet in each stitch. Stacey just posted that it's really okay if, if your sack is a bit smaller or larger than Melanie's. So just keep that in mind that, you know, soap comes in all different sizes. So it's really okay if we don't come out exactly oh. the same size. This is one thing that's really great about this project. And it can, you know, it can, it, it can depend on the yarn too. Okay, so the sugar and cream is a four ply cotton. The crafter secret is a three ply. So you can see, just the difference of the two yarns. There's really only like 30 yards. I mean, not yardage wise, it's not that much bigger, but this one, the sugar and cream one will make a bigger soap sack to begin with, just because the yarn is a lot thicker than, let me see if I can, I don't know if it'll zoom enough, but you can see how much thicker the sugar and cream is. It's a very sturdy yarn. So if you're going for sturdy right here. sugar and cream right there, can see what the fibers are. Uh, let me see. Uh, da -da. Somewhat. Yeah. Just the fibers are a lot thicker on the sugar and cream. So if you go on for a sturdier project, I would go with the sugar and cream. But I really, I mean, I haven't found a bad cotton yet. So all of them have been working up really well and been holding up really well. I made uh, soap sacks out of everyone and I washed them with uh, my laundry. I washed them at least five times with my laundry and threw them in the dryer. And so far they've come up really great. So I have no complaints about any of the cotton yarns, even the, you know, the craft of secret which was like $1.25 on sale. So if you lose count, I love this pattern because it's so easy to count your, uh, your rows. As you just go, it's so, you can tell them really easily part where your rows are. So you have one, two, three, four, five. Or you can have a, another soap sack and just put it next to it and like, okay, where am I? Oh, okay, I need a couple more rows. So you can also do that. And we're just going to crochet on up. Okay, always remember our last stitch right here that sometimes is a little hidden. And when in doubt, if you think you're all of a sudden getting smaller, count your stitches or count your posts and see how many you have. Okay, one, two, three, slip stitch to the 
beginning of the round. Chain two. And here we go. One single, uh, one double crochet in each stitch. One, two, three, join my round and move on to the next. And Stacy actually has a knitting version of this soap sack on her Ravelry, Ravelry, and it's also on Lion Brand. So if there's any knitters out there wanna do this, there's also the knitted version of it. Slip stitch, let's see where I am. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, I'm almost there. Two more rounds, two more rounds. Chain two, I, I see, I almost forgot it. Always chain two at the beginning of the round. Okay, so I'm at the end of my round 10. So we end this the same way. We're gonna find our third chain, one, two, three. And ooh, slip stitch in here. Okay, so this is what it looks like after your 10 rounds, right there. Now, guess what? This is the last round. This has only 11 rounds. How fun is this? I knew I could finish something. <laughs> okay, last round, chain one. And all you will do now is single crochet. So the double crochet, we are just going to single crochet all the way around. And if you remember, single crochet, insert your hook, pull up a yarn, two loops on the yarn, yarn over, pull through both loops. Insert your hook, pull up your yarn, two loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through both hooks. So just your single crochet all the way around. Okay, so I'm coming back from where I started, my chain one right here. Now, the pattern says, last round and loop, chain one, single crochet in each stitch around, join with a slip stitch in the beginning of the chain. So chain one, I join with my slip stitch right here. Okay, then chain 14. Now these, I don't make them uh, very loose because it's just a loop. You're not gonna stitch into the chain. So I crochet these kind of tight. So one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay. So you have fourteen chain right here. And then okay. Where we joined it, whoops, sorry, where we joined it right here, you're just gonna slip stitch. So insert your hook, pull up your loop. It looks like and then just grab that first hook, pull it through the second. So, so. Uh, at this point, you can just fasten off. I'm a little bit, um, how should I say this? I don't, I like to just be extra secure. So I slip stitch a couple more stitches, like three of them. I always think everything's gonna unravel. So I do like an extra three slip stitches. You don't have to do that. It's not in the pattern. That's a personal thing. Cut our yarn, pull through and it will look like Oh, yeah. Tuck this in. It will look like this. And then all we have to do now is weave in our ends. And you're done with your soap sack. Turn around. I'm going to start with my bottom little tail and weave this in. If your hole is very, 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 very big, no problem. You just can kind of go through a little bit. Go through these stitches down here. You can cinch this right up, but it do doesn't have to be fully closed. All right. Let's do this again. So I just kind of weave my way through a couple of these stitches down here. Pull my yarn change direction three times to fully secure it. Go vertical at least once. And then just cut my yarn. So that's one. I'm gonna go for this one right here. Okay, so. Okay, I'm gonna go. So this is the nice outside. So I'm gonna go finish this, of course, on the inside. So I'm gonna go back a stitch. And then I'm gonna start with going vertical first, weaving in. So go down, change directions, go on to the left, go back down. If you change direction, we want to change direction three times to have a nice secure woven in thread. Okay, let's go to the right. Of course, I do it more. Like I said, I'm always paranoid that everything went unravel. So I just extra weave everything in and back vertical. Okay. And then just cut your yarn. Can you tell us why we don't tie knots? Um knots uh, make actually it's a point of weakness in a yarn so uh, if you have it woven in the it will stretch but it will not put pressure on the yarn where a knot will have is a point of weakness if you stretch it too much it might rip right there then at the knot and then it could unravel so if you have a nice woven in um, tail it's a lot more secure than a knot let me do the uh, first three rounds with let's see all right so do our slip knot on our hook. Okay, round one, make a slip knot, slip knot on your hook and chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And we're gonna find our first chain right here. And we're gonna go right back in that little chain to have something like this little U, little U shape on your hook. Just do a slip stitch, pull up that yarn right through to get our little circle right here. So you have a 
Now we are going to crochet not in the stitches around. We are going to crochet right in here, right? This big hole in the middle right here. So round one, chain one, I do two, but chain one or two, whatever your preference is, try it with both. And we're doing our 12 double crochets. So double crochet, yarn over, insert into the circle, pull up a loop. You have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through one, two loops, two loops left on the hook, yarn over, pull through all the rest. Okay, so yarn over in your circle, grab that yarn, pull it up, three loops on your hook, yarn over, one, two, two loops left, yarn over through both loops. So one, two, three, three, four, five, six, seven, whoops, eight, nine, ten. If you don't, you can also like move the stitches a little bit closer together if you need a little bit more room. So you kind of just bunch them up if you need to see where you're going. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 11, 12. Let me double check. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 11, 12. Okay. So before we join, it will look like this. So remember we did our chain two, that doesn't count. So one, two, slip stitch will go in here. Slip stitch right here. Again, you just insert your hook, grab that yarn, pull up two loops. Don't yarn over, just take this loop right here and go right through. And this was, round one can you do that slip stitch one more time sure of course okay so you at the end are you right here yes yeah so you have your chain to one two we don't count them we'll go in three right here so right there okay so we're going to insert our hook right here grab the yarn oops Insert our hook, grab the yarn, you pull up two loops, and then you just slide your hook back right here. Grab this first loop right here and go through the back loop right there. This is your end of round one. Now we're gonna do our first increase. We're going to chain two at the beginning, and then we're gonna go right, right here in that first one right there. First stitch, so we're gonna put, in our first stitch, we're gonna put two double crochets. Oops, my goodness. One, two. And now for the rest of the stitches, you're gonna increase on two. So I usually just count one, two, one, two, and you're gonna increase on two every time. So one, double crochet, two, increased, two double crochets. One, two, one, Two, rescue my yarn, one, two, one, 
one. Two, and then at the end, don't forget our last stitch goes right here. It's gonna be right below the chain two. Okay, let's put our last stitch in here and you should end on a, just on one double crochet, not an increased double crochet. So we should end on one. Okay, and we'll go back. I'm gonna look for our chain right there. Our chain two, one, two, ignore and slip stitch into three right there. So one, two, and slip stitch. So two slogans, so insert your hook, grab your yarn, two loops under hook. two loops and then this guy right here, the front one, just go through. You can see it's already starting to get a little oval shape right there. So at this point, you probably have a bowl like this. So you can either keep, I, I like, I just kind of turn it around and crochet it with facing this way. It just makes it a little easier for me. So that was our first increase round, round two. I'm gonna do the same thing for round three. Chain two, we're going to right here, put in our increase, two double crochets. And just as the same as before, we're gonna increase on two. So one, two, one, two. Double crochet, one, two, increase, two double crochets. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, yep. come on, play nice yarn. One, two, one, increase on two, and last one. one. Two. All right, almost to the end. Okay. And up, ending right here. There we go. Two. And always the last stitch right here, right under the Chain two, you should end in just one double crochet. And do the same thing. We're gonna look for our chain. Chain two, one, two. And then insert, we're gonna slip stitch in this third stitch up here. So, of course I pulled it a little tight, so. Oy. Okay, insert your hook. Grab your yarn two stitches, wrap this front yarn and just pull it right through this guy. And that's it, that's your second and last increase round. And all you do from for the next 
Round four to, through 10 is chain two. And just put one double crochet in each stitch. Just go around and around. Until you get back to this. Or this, I haven't woven in the ends yet, so. <laughs> there we go. You can tell a little bit the crafter's yarn because it's a little bit thinner. It's of course stretches a bit more. And this next thread was done with the uh, sugar. It's the reg yeah, regular sugar and cream. It's, it has a bit more oomph to it. So that's that's what it is. I love this pattern. I'm obsessed. Kathy Lawrence, you had a question. Um, when you get to the end and your loop yes. is done. Yes. And you come back and join it with a slip stitch. Yes. Those, those extra little security, three or four stitches, are those a single crochet or a slip stitch? They are slip stitches. Slip stitch. and they're right. not part of the pattern. It's just right. a personal thing I do. Yeah. Got it. Okay, yeah. thank you. Also, for some reason, if something is right next to like a loop, I just like to go over just a tad because I think that it's going to be a lot of pressure right. on the loop. It's going to hold a lot of weight. So I figured- yeah. 100% agree. We yep. in a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. And I um, mean, also the thing that's so important, like you mentioned about not caring so much about the size, like this isn't a garment. It's okay if it doesn't look perfect. You know, it's, it's a soap sack. It's like I yeah. said, someone's not going to wear it. It's just as long as you're making it and you're feeling good about making it, um, don't, you know, don't overstress over um no. the size of it yeah and one yeah. extra stitch you know exactly. is not gonna matter <laughs> so let okay. me just thank it's everybody not. for coming to the soap yeah. sack uh class today and i want to thank our very very special guest stacy wiener from soap sack and i just want to thank you for all the amazing philanthropic work you have done um just it's, it's truly incredible so do you want to just give a little plug here for your organization and then let people who who don't want to donate locally and who who uh maybe don't want to work with our charity partner if they want to send soap sack directly to you um let them know about your website Sure, absolutely. Um, if you would like to knit, crochet, loom, um, even so, using um, you know maybe washcloth, uh, washcloth fabric, you could send those to uh, SAC, SAC PO Box thirty three in Allenhurst, New Jersey, zero seven seven one one, and that's on our website. So if you um, didn't write that down, it's www.soapsacks.com. And uh, any type of donation would be great. If you send five, you send 10, whatever you send, it's great. Cause then it gives um, me the opportunity of donating in my community or when I'm in my travels to donate to different, um, to serve the underserved. So really thank you so much for your support. And um, it just, hey. as we say, we are extending kindness one sack at a time. I know. I love, I love, yeah. I love what, I love what SAC. So tell us SAC. So I love your acronym. So tell yeah. us SAC. What is okay. it stand for? So SAC, as you can see by in the back there is supporting a community with kindness. So, and we're a 501 C three we've trademarked the logo and this is um, approaching our fourth year. So it's really exciting. I, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm three years as a nonprofit, uh, 501 C three, four years that I started it. So the first year was uh, really mostly myself doing it. And yeah. now I have volunteers from all over the world. And now I have the crafting change community that's oh, yeah. um, we're, really we're helping. Super, we're super honored to support you. And I want to thank yeah. um, our volunteer, Judy, for connecting us. So it's just I know, so Judy, I, I can't thank, thank you enough. Give because... away to Judy over there. Yeah. yeah. Hi. Judy for Judy. Us. So we're yes. super we're super honored to be working with yeah. you and to support you in any way that we can and then you've uh, been supporting, supporting our partners you sent a huge donation to everyday action right. i know you sent a donation to piper's project yes. so so yeah. i want to i want to thank everyone for coming